from Mount Vernon, the first president of the United States. Hey, hi, I'm George Washington, patriot, father of our country, and denture wearer. Grrr. Many people think Noah Webster is the man responsible for the dictionary as we know it today. However, more than 50 years before Webster published his book, there was Samuel Johnson. Nothing did the job until I found the ability to amend the Constitution. You can have your appointment thingy now, Mr. Johnson. Indeed. Thank you, madam. And might I add that your punctiliousness is matched only by your most sublime pulchritude. Ew! Gross! What are you, a pervert or something? Jerk! But what if we can't see the whites of their eyes? Well, what about the sunglasses? Samuel Johnson, sir. Poet, expositor, dramatist, and most renowned wit on the scepter dial. Yeah, dude, it's bright out. If they were smart, they'd be wearing sunglasses. Maybe they didn't get any sleep last night and their eyes are all red and bloodshot. Affirmative, sir. I give you the Dictionary of the English Language. Most amusing, sir. In 1552, Mary, Queen of Scots, was one of the first golfers to use a caddy. I'll tell you what. I'll let you choose how we determine whether or not... Let's begin! Splendid idea. Let me see. It's a lexicon, sir. A comprehensive index of every word in the English language in alphabetical order, along with each word's definition. Ah, yes. Here's a bewitching little passage. Crepusculus, adjective, derived from the Latin, meaning glimmering, in a state between lightness and darkness, as in, the beginnings of philosophy were in a crepusculous obscurity. Oh, a most wise decision, sir. Thank you! Now I gotta start a book! And so on April 15th, 1755, Samuel Johnson published the most comprehensive dictionary the world had seen to date. It took him nine years to write, and it was 4,600 pages long. Thanksgiving dinner! And I can get it down to one page. Oh, brother. Yes, sir!